hi everyone welcome to my channel i'm flaminia i'm an 18 year old knitter from italy and thank you so much for clicking on this video i wanted to hear about my knitting plans for this upcoming year if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back and for sticking around and if you're a new viewer which there are a lot actually probably coming from Sam's channel, from Irish Farm Art, and oh my god, Sam recommended my channel on his podcast, and I'm so, so thankful for that, and thank you, Sam, for saying all those kind things, because you made me cry. If you're coming from his channel, thank you for stopping by. Today, as I said, we're talking about knitting plans for 2023 and I have a lot to share actually. I was hesitant to film this video but I actually have so many things to say. I have, um, I have knitting resolutions and knitting plans in terms of what garments I want to make and so let's get into it because there is a lot. I don't have many resolutions for sure the first one is i want to keep knitting fun because that's why i do it i do it because it relaxes me and i wanna i don't want to stress out about something that i do because it helps me not stressing about other stuff so what would be the purpose <laughs> and the second point is also connected to this first one that is knitting less for others doing less gift knitting especially for like during christmas time because this year i made two jumpers for christmas i'm happy that i did them because it's always lovely the part where you give the item to the recipient but at the same time when i did my everything i needed in 2022 and i don't know i felt like the knitting year for myself stopped at like october or november and i'm like it didn't do anything for me in december and i don't know it really stressed me out so if i'm gonna gift knit something will probably be a smaller item because yeah i cannot gift everyone a sweater sorry mm. another resolution is to use up most of my stash it's kind of a popular <laughs> knitting resolution for the new year every time but so i don't have i mean i have much yarn but I don't have many sweaters, sweater quantities and this has made the process very complex for me in the past to clear up all my like oddballs and scraps but I have inspiration this time and projects in mind for every scrap basically almost everything in my stash so this year I actually like another resolution of mine for this year is to how to how to say that is to start long long term projects. I think I want to train myself to like slower knitting and longer projects that I will in the end get like the most use out of than just quicker projects that maybe would be less functional in my wardrobe yeah i think you will see this like this thing coming along in a lot of projects that i have in mind then another thing that i realized is that during this first year of knitting i really understood like which yarn is suitable for which projects I made some mistake, <laughs> that's why I think I learned. For example, I knitted a sweater last year, a colorwork sweater that is made with an alpaca wool blend that is a turtleneck. But I found out that I'm really, really sensitive to wool 
and I don't wear that sweater a lot even though it's like the most beautiful thing ever seen but just because it's way too scratchy around my neck and I cannot bear it mm. so I just understood that like I understood which fibers I can knit which projects but so yeah I understood for example that I like soft fibers as merino wool even non even like either superwash or non superwash merino if I have something that sits around my neck like you can see this sweater is knitted in drops nipple um, that is again like I think it's the same uh, fiber combination as the other yarn that I use for the turtleneck sweater but you see like that I have a t-shirt underneath but it's touching my neck slightly and like I'm becoming red AF <laughs> so I like so I like merino for stuff that it's gonna be touching my neck think that's gonna be touching my neck and I think that something and I think that fibers that irritates my skin are more suitable for like cardigans and for cardigans and like outerwear pieces where it's not gonna be made where maybe it's v-neck so that it's not gonna be touching directly sensitive parts of my body so yeah, I think I want to be more intentional with the fibers that I use in combo with the pattern that I... in combo with the design that I'm going for. These two next things are optional because I think that the plans that I have are already really ambitious. <laughs> First, to participate in a test knit I would really love to test knit a pattern and help out a designer in bringing out their patterns and see the work that there is behind all of the designing stuff. Maybe in the future I will want to start designing myself, who knows? It's like, I don't think it will be something that will happen in the near future, but I would really love to learn what there is to know about at least the testnating part of designing and I'm going to be talking about these two now because there are projects that I would love to knit this year but I don't have the yarn for them yet and as I am planning to knit from my stash this year I might not be able to to achieve these two projects because they're quite big projects <laughs> the first is the november jacket by petit knit and i don't know what it is about brioche stitch but i don't know i never worked with it on like a full size garment i just needed like a swatch <laughs> with it just to try out something different but i don't know i think it would be a nice process like very long process though because i think the only two stitches that you use are brioche stitch which ex itself is very tricky and time consuming and yarn consuming and if you make a mistake which i which i hope will not be the case like fixing fixing it i don't know if i would be able to fix it to be honest so let's cross our fingers and then uh double knitting that is double so like you knit it on smaller needles and it takes double the time because in order to see one row you gotta knit back and forth so that would be a very long project and i don't even know if i am the type of gal that wear 
like knitted jackets but i maybe become one who knows with that and also but i think it would be just a work of art because it looks so refined and so polished and so store-bought that is so fascinating to me I, because i would i think i would feel so accomplished after finishing that the other kind of monster of a project that i would like to knit that i don't have the yarn for is the sweater number 15 by my favorite things knitwear and i want to learn all that there is to it all the techniques that there are there because i think that would be I think that I just would wear it a lot. Cables are just my thing, don't you notice? Okay? But yeah, I realized it is probably a slog a little bit, the body. But I don't mind, like, I don't want to mind. This year, I don't want to mind knitting slowly and seeing slow progress on my projects. I want to be more mature about that and more patient. We will see though, <laughs> we will see at the end of the year what I will think about this. It's just a little, little milestone that we reached in the process of growing this little community and to know new people and to learn from all the amazing creators that are out there. So thanks so much for that, I'm very thankful. So let's start, I think, with the sweater quantities. Yeah, so uh, me and my mom, during the Christmas time and the New Year's time, um, we went around a lot in yarn stores, which is something that we never do. <laughs> but, and that's why I don't have uh, many sweater quantities but this time there were sales and i couldn't help myself because i always see people i don't know going to yarn stores and just getting wool for a very good price and you know it just breaks my heart every time that i see it i always thought that there weren't many yarn stores in rome but actually there are quite a lot but they're not called like yarn stores so if you think so if you search for them like on the internet you don't find them <laughs> kinda and then they're not nearly near me not at all i don't have my driver's license yet and i usually don't have time to spend going to yarn stores by uh, public transports unfortunately but so let's start and i'm rambling for now it's full of bags and baskets in here and yeah i don't know where to start so um the first sweater quantity that i have that i purchased around that time when me and my mom went shopping is this that is Lanagato Ottocapi yarn. That is, I believe, the translation of eight ply. This yarn feels so luxurious. 50 grams for 170 meters. So I think it's kind of a sport weight. Like it's between a DK and a fingering weight and it's like the the yarn band says that you should work it um with three to three point five millimeters and the gauge is 25 stitches for 33 rows so yeah it's it's very fine but i got I got 500 grams, so 10 balls of this for 35 euros, which is quite good, I think. And then uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it, so 
just in case I bought two more skeins. So I have 600, 600 grams of this. Um, what I want to do with this, it's actually a self-drafted cable sweater that I have in mind. I don't know if I ever want to release it, but I want to learn how to design a sweater for myself, for sure. So this is what it is for. And I forgot to say it is extra fine merino wool, the content. So next sweater quantity I bought in a yarn store that was so full of yarns and I've never heard of before and I don't know, I don't think I remember the name but it was full of yarn and I believe they were all like Italian brands or made in Italy and like it broadened my horizons so much this is what I bought look at the tag, it's beautiful I don't know which city this is Maybe it's not a real city, but it's beautiful. The tag. Please focus. Okay. It is Merino 100, made in Italy. Which is the brand? I don't know what brand. It's... Ispe, like I-S-V-E, it's made in Padova, in the northern part of Italy, and 50 grams is more or less 100 meters, so it should be a DK, and it's a virgin wool, unshrinkable, virgin wool shrink resistant, so I think it's super wash, shrink resistant, I think yeah what do you think should be unshrinkable wool think so it suggests four to four and a half millimeter needles and the gauge is 17 stitches for 22 rows and what I have in mind for this is, oh my god, it's a sweater that I fell in love with since the first time that I saw it. I don't see people talking about it, but I don't know why. It's the sweater number 19, I believe, from my favorite things knitwear. Uh, it actually calls for a thinner yarn than this but I'm just gonna knit the extra small and pray for the best uh, kind of I bought 14 skeins of this for the sweater number 19 should be enough so about other sweaters quantities I have this pack that my mom gave me another plan of mine is to knit at least one fingering weight sweater because I think I would get a lot more use out of it instead of a heavier weight sweater. So actually, these yarns are not the same, but I believe that they can be used together. I don't see the difference. It's again, um, oh, it's Lanagato yarn. And it was from my mom's stash. They're like, the same color to my eye what do you say i think they could work together i hope this is mignon lavabile lavatrice which is machine washable and it's lana gato and it's 25 grams for 140 meters damn so it's very light let me do the math i thought this was fingering but it's actually a lace weight yarn because yeah it's very bouncy but i guess that when you work with it it gets finer 
because it's 25 grams for 140 meters so 100 grams is 560 meters so also so almost 600 meters so i guess it's a light 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 fingering or a heavy lace something like that and it also suggests two slash 2.5 millimeter needles so i guess i'm holding this double because yeah fring fingering is enough for me and um this one is lanagato gomitolo which is ball of yarn this is 50 grams for 225 meters so it's a fingering like a light fingering but it's a fingering it's the same i guess for the knitting for olive merino or very similar don't quote me on that but i find it so interesting to look at the tags these are of course the old vintage lana gatos tags and they're so cute like look at that i don't know how old this yarn is but I think a lot. Yes, oh my gosh, this is definitely a lace because the gauge is 40, 46 stitches for 33 rows. And they are both 100% um, pure virgin wool, but they're very soft, so. But yeah, it's really nice. I have 330 grams for the white. Then I have for the same yarns, I think. No, this is another one. I have 100 grams of this pink yarn that is the same as the fingering white yarn. And then I have 50 grams of this fingering weight lilac. merino extra fine merino wool i could actually think that a collar work sweater could be cute with this but i use i wouldn't use it as much as a plain white fingering weight sweater so that's what i'm planning to do with this yarn i'm sorry for the crackling nose of the plastic bags uh, if you have any recommendations for fingering weight sweater patterns, please leave them in the comments because, yeah, I don't have much knowledge about these types of sweater patterns. Uh, I thought, like, um, many people needed uh, the... I don't remember the name, but it's like this raglan v-neck sweater from Pearl Soho that it's nice, but I don't know, I want to consider other options. Another yarn that I would like to use for a fingering weight sweater is the Knitting for Olive Merino. These are leftovers from a sweater that I knitted from my mom last year, and it's in the shade Bordeaux. With this, last year I started knitting some leg warmers for my dance lessons, but that I started again recently, by the way, and I nearly finished them. Like they're very, very long, but I don't know if this is the right use for this yarn. I don't know, I think that training with 100% merino wool leg warmers will get really hard really fast, but then, yeah, they wouldn't be so practical, maybe. They would be too heavy and warm. So I have this amount of yarn that is like 300. Actually, I don't remember how much this is, but I think that I will be that if I don't have enough, which is probably the case, I will be purchasing the few balls that I will need to finish the sweater in question. Okay, so now talking about the big 
quantities of yarn that I have. Uh, I have two projects, two scrappy projects, and one I have actually started already. That is in this bag, and it's the excavation blanket. This is the progress on it that I have so far, and I'm in love with this guy. Look at it! Oh my god! Oh god! It is so nice and so creative like creating the color fades yeah here um i knotted with the magic knot but then the yarn was i think too smooth to, to hold on to itself so i will figure it out afterwards yeah this is the blanket my look at the section here oh my god i'm loving it so much also the fact that there are no ends to weave in it's like a lifesaver because i yeah i had all this um oddballs from another person's stash that so wasn't yarn that i knew or that i knew the content or the meterage or anything <laughs> about it so i knew that i wanted to do a scrappy project with all those balls but yeah i wasn't feeling like a scrappy sweater would be something that i would use a lot and then i was seeing all the these blankets needed like with squares and then attached together but they were a billion ends to weave in which i don't mind but i think that with that amount of ends to weave in you have to be like the most beautiful work of art ever and i i don't know i wasn't feeling that because um there were like differences in the dimensions of the squares because People were using, of course, different yarn weights, but then I was bothered by it. And then I was like, yeah, but if I have all those yarns, am I, am I gonna have enough to knit a full blanket with, like, matching yarns that are the same weight? I don't think so. Yeah, and they just, I don't know, weren't expiring. Like, they look very boring to knit on. But then I saw Emily from I Fiber Knits that I really enjoy watching and she was knitting this blanket and I fell in love and I fell in love with her version and the thought behind the pattern. Basically, it's a free pattern so I can talk to you about this. So basically, you start with like three stitches on here or something and then you increase on either sides uh, and you knit two rounds of garter stitch so that you so that your ends are on the same side of the blanket so that you can knot them together to create tassels and it's so cute like of course i will have to trim <laughs> the ends and also maybe Steam block them just because they are very curly and messy but it is so nice and yeah soon I think I will have to buy a longer four millimeter needles yeah the pattern I think calls for a 2.5 millimeter or something but I'm using a four and I'm just like holding fingering weights double and lace weights <laughs> quadruple like four strands of laces and then one strand of like was worsted iron weights and it's working out well yeah and i love it highly highly recommend brings so much joy and i have a lot of scraps to use for this project so like the problem maybe if you want to call it so is that 
of course the more you go on the longer the rows get and you need uh, bigger amounts of scraps of course I could not use like this lila strap for the next row because it wouldn't be enough but then I'm saving it for when I will decrease again for the other half of the blanket so yeah this won't go to waste but yeah this is all for the blanket oh, I cannot wait to finish it I'm I think I will be filming like clips along the the journey of making this blanket because I think that's that would be such a cute thing that once it's finished I could just go back and watch like the whole process and yeah. Oh my god, we have <laughs> we have so much stuff. I know I will be cutting a lot, but we are already at like 35 minutes of recording. The other scrappy project is I want to do like an very a very loose and oversized cotton sweater. So let me show you because in this massive stash of this person that was gifted to me, there were so many scraps, but the major part of them were cotton scraps but of course like i wouldn't put cotton scraps in my blanket project because that one is a wool winter meant to keep warm blanket so yeah i wouldn't see the purpose but then i just one day separated all the uh, scraps for the blanket and the scraps for like the cotton scraps and I put them in my knitting book so yeah no, it's messy <laughs> but these are the scraps for the blanket these are small like cotton scraps like three grams or uh, I don't know and these colors are for the sweater and I noticed that they were looking very nice together so I thought about just doing a sweater because yeah I'm not a fan of just needing small projects because especially with cotton like what would I need a scrunchie I don't really use scrunchies because if I tie my hair it's probably because of my dance lessons and when I go out I usually don't tie my hair or or I don't use scrunchies let me show you the color palette of this yarn because it's looking very nice. They're rolling all over the places, so I'm just gonna show you <laughs> for like in color families. These are the blues that I have. These are the pinks and violets that I have. And these are the greens and yellows. And there is also this cream color that, yeah, I will see if I'll need to use it or... And if I don't need it, I think I'll use it in a crochet bag or something like that. But yeah, looking nice together. Great, great. Then I have also these mini balls that I will use in the sweater just if I need them. Some other cotton that I had, that is this one, that is Cable Egypto 5, that I think it is 100% Egyptian cotton, and it is um, 50 grams for 210 meters, and I think this would be suitable for um, the camisole number five that I am so eager to start. I was also last year because I saw everyone needing it, but yeah, I couldn't be bothered to buy the yarn for it. So I actually have it because I have three balls of this. So I have 150 grams with it, which is bang on. Um, it calls for like knitting for olive. That is 250 meters for 50 grams. So I have 
less meterage than the recommended but if it's a little bit cropped i don't mind then going on again with the cotton projects with the summer projects i have I think four balls of this yarn, like not four balls like this, but I have four 50 gram balls of this yarn that is Drops Paris. I already started a project with this last summer, but I frogged it because I wasn't enjoying knitting on it. So I think I will be doing what? I, I was talking to a knitting friend if you may call it so i saw that they made the celine top or camisole by Paula street that is like the one similar to these the camisole number six i think by my favorite things knitwear but yeah i think this would be nice I think it's a really easy, simple tank top, and I think I would get a lot of a lot of use out of it in the summer. Then I have four balls of this cotton right here that is Basic Lux, made in Italy by Mondial, lanemondial.com, and it's the color one five five. It's uh, 50 grams for 120 meters uh, on a 22 stitches for 26 rows gauge mm. yeah I actually started <laughs> another project last summer with this one but I frogged it I don't have a ton of this but I have in mind this summer top that I might be trying to recreate with this and I want to make it really like with a not too dense of a gauge so 200 grams might be enough I hope it is then I have this leftover from the first sweater that I knitted but that I'm actually gonna frog and re-knit so I don't want to have plans for this in case I need more yarn. And I have one extra ball of this alpaca silk by Drops. And I might just hold this like double or triple and put it into the blanket again. Because with one ball, I don't think I have something in mind with one ball. And as I said, I need bigger scraps for the the middle of the blanket, so a full full skein is coming handy. Then I have this yarn that I want to knit a December bow with because I made a hair bow for one of my friends and I'm actually really jealous because I want one for myself too. So I'm gonna knit a bow with this. And then again, if I have scraps, they will go into the blanket. Then I have an unfinished project knitted with Drops Alaska that I'm gonna knit a cardigan with. I might have to purchase more if I don't have enough, but I think I'm gonna knit the cardigan number eight by my favorite things knitwear because first I wanted to do the champagne cardigan, but um this yarn is too thick for that but then i was like i'm gonna just gauge but, but cardigan number eight is just more oversized is just a more oversized with a bigger gauge version of the um champagne cardigan and i'm just gonna not knit the pockets because i'm not interested in knitting pockets and i have um like seven or six and a half skeins of drops nipple that I left over <laughs> from a sweater and I think I'm gonna make a Sophie shawl with what I have just dividing the yarn into two and just knitting on five millimeter needles you know with half until 
half of the project and then start decreasing with the other half. Then I have two balls left of the Drops uh, Merino Extra Fine and yeah, I know I'm not a fan of smaller scraps but I think that this would be very useful to have as um, fingerless gloves something very similar to the penny gloves by Petit Knit I'm thinking with this then we will see though. Then I have three and a half balls left over of this that I used again in a jumper. And I think, I don't know, I might knit a hat with this, but it's not really my color. But maybe it would be nice as a hat, so maybe a knitting hat with that. And then the leftovers if I have into the blanket. And I have this huge skein that is like the same yarn as this, but just in the red color because it was obtained by unraveling the same sweater. <laughs> and But it is, I think, 150 grams. So... I might need a sleepover with this because maybe a stop Stockholm sleepover v-neck that I already made with the black one but maybe like a red version would be fun as a statement piece I, I'd also thought a hat would be nice but then I love the look of beanies, but I don't live in a climate where I need beanies. Like, I made um, one. I made one beanie, uh, the watch cap hat by Pearl Soho in Jobs Lima in a creamy color. But I do not wear it because it's just not cold enough <laughs> to wear it, I guess. So. I just want to use the this yarn in a right way and I think a sleepover would be more practical and yeah even if this would be so nice as a hat but I have to be strong though I gotta be strong and I'll have fun winding this yarn into a ball because I don't have I have a Zwift that is like old as hell i think it's my grandma's i'll show you it's this that it's yeah very vintagey looking just <laughs> no fancy engines like rotating this you expand the the thingy but yeah it's very cute and but i don't have a a yarn winder so I will wind all this by hand and it will become a huge ball then I have this huge skein of like my mom it's my mom's and she said that it's an angora blend Oh my god oh my god this color is beautiful it's the first time that i am taking that out of the plastic but look at this color it's beautiful oh my god and it's super soft it's not too thin which is good because I want to do so many favorite weight projects this year. But oh my god, what do I do with you? You're beautiful. Yeah, I thought a hat. But maybe a sleepover. Like this is yeah, I haven't checked that they're actually 200 grams. There may be more, but this might work to be honest, as the Ingrid sleepover or something fancy like that. Oh my god, I'm excited! 
excited yes yeah and we reached 100 subscribers which is very exciting I mean, if this sparked inspiration and you want to tell me what, like, what garment this inspired you, I would be glad if you have any ideas for this. We're finished with my stash, but then I have um, some projects that I want to frog, like some unfinished objects that I want to frog and some finished objects that I want to frog. First one we have this vest that I self-drafted myself with some yarn that my mom wasn't using again it's like a hundred percent alpaca and I did like one row stocking net and cables stocking net cables it's really nice but you know it's pretty cropped and I have one armo done, the other one is not done at all, and I have the rest of the body left to do, and this is what I have left. So I don't think this is gonna be enough at all. It is a really nice yarn, not scratchy for me. Tiny, 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 tiny bit scratchy, but yeah, I'm proud that I managed to like I think it's nice maybe not the fit that I would enjoy because I like a deeper v-neck and something not as cropped but I really like I experimented with like sh making cute shoulders I did cables running down the armholes and etc also on the front along the v-neck and again i don't know what to do with this after i frogged it maybe like a head would be nice again oh god a head would be really nice maybe it will be a hat for a gift the fact that i don't that i don't need to wear beanies breaks my heart because it would look so cute with my hair but yeah this might be yarn for a gift mitt i guess a whole slow hat maybe but this is a dk so i would have to alter the pattern we will see but yeah this might become an all slow hat look at this it's cute and this yarn was very old again so you might not be able to find it it's lanagato super alpaca so it's no it's actually 50 percent merino wool and 50 percent alpaca and it's 50 grams for 115 meters so it's a decay yeah definitely but I think this is one of the old yarns because it has the to the logo as the other like vintage yarns have. Then the other things that I want to frog, you know, this was the famous sweater in Drops Alaska that I talked to you about before. Then I have this sweater that was one of my favorite sweaters as a child and I would think make a cushion cushion cover pillow cover out of it something similar <laughs> and I have this cotton acrylic blend sweater and with this I might knit a like stockinette cotton raglan easy busy basic sweater because like this is nice but i'm frogging it <laughs> because i don't like these cables on cotton yarn like they look kind of messy and i'm also as i said going to frog my first sweater that i'll put pictures up because it's in my closet that is literally this one but I cannot be bothered 
and then also the first uh, cardigan that I made that is the first ever garment that I made that is crocheted and I'm thinking about either re knitting it or just using it to make pillow covers again so this is it I think for my plans I know it was a lot sorry I'll try to edit out most of it so that it's not a billion hours long but I had fun filming this video I hope you had fun listening to me rambling about the yarn that I own and I hope you sticked around till the end if you did my compliments and if you like this video maybe consider subscribing if you'd like to see more from me and to see what I will actually achieve of these many plans going on that I have and also let me know in the comments if you have any plans for 2023 if you have some patterns that you'd want to make in particular if you have um if you have recommendations for me for a fingering weight sweater pattern and yeah thank you for making me company during this time and see you in the next video bye <laughs>